Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So our gospel passage from John chapter 6 starts out with, declarat with a declaratory statement. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. When you read such declaratory statements, have you ever wondered, what do these things mean? Is Jesus the actual, actual living bread, or is it a metaphorical thought? For you see, Jesus makes other declaratory statements in the same sort of manner all throughout the Gospel of John. I am the light of the world. I am the gate or the door for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sure, our Jesus is all of these things, but why say them? Is Jesus trying to proclaim an arrogant state of mind with those whom he is speaking with? No. Instead, I have come to believe that Jesus, with these statements, is asserting his purpose of why he came here in the flesh, God in the flesh, in the first place. Why he came in a manger all of those centuries ago. Why he was crucified on the cross and came back to life, fully resurrected three days later. His purpose. Jesus came to save us. Put another way, Jesus came to resurrect us. He resurrected. First, he resurrected us to make us whole from out of our brokenness. Yet Jesus also brought about resurrection in a different manner. Through the cross, Jesus reconnected us with our Creator God. Before Jesus came in the flesh, there was this vast canyon of separation between us and God somewhere out there in the cosmos. Please see the entire Old Testament for an example of that. It all started after that whole apple incident in the garden where I believe, well, I think it was the woman's fault. Um, <laughs> tempting the the man. All the women are going, uh, no. <laughs> but the bottom line, though, is that here were all of these broken people pushing, or broken people that were pushed by God. And here was God who was trying to reconnect with God's people, trying to draw them closer. And so God decides to take care of them by God's self. By sending his only begotten son, the good shepherd, who will lead us, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, our relationship with God has been restored. Our relationship with God has been resurrected. Wholeness triumphed once more. Check this out. Verse 56 of our gospel. I want you to look in just one little word of this text. And this one little word is called abide. In ancient Greek, the word is meno, a verb that means to remain, to stay, to live, dwell, last, endure. In the Gospel of John, this little word shows up 40 times throughout all of its chapters. A little word that has a lot of impact but we seemingly gloss over without thinking over it twice. So, abide. What does abide mean for us who love God and for those who may be here who are trying to seek God? In short, this is a calling from God asking us to abide in a holy relationship where we are intentional in making this abiding happen. Throughout Scripture, as well throughout your day, God is very intentional with you. Abiding throughout your day, through your work, your play, your retirement, your school, your vacation, while you sleep. What does your abiding 
with God look like? Do you see God's face in Scripture? Do you seek God in prayer? Do you consistently worship God's holy name? Do you seek God in the miraculous as well as in the ordinary moments within your life, just as Martin Luther suggests, in the tiniest of flowers? What does your abiding look like? For you see, a holy relationship with God truly serves your best interest. For within this abiding we do with God, God wants to show you the width and the depth of his love for you. God wants to show you grace, hope, peace, and strength as you go through the ups and downs of your crazy life. We are called to abide. So how are you abiding with God? Now we intentionally abide with friends and family with no problem. When, as a result, we have strong relationship with those whom we love. We'll go out and have maybe a cup of coffee, go out to dinner, invite people to our homes, share a phone call, maybe even pray with each other. So I challenge you to do the same with God, to answer God's call to grace, to this graceful call to come and abide in his embrace. So let's go back to Jesus' statements. The whole, I am the living bread, I am the way, the truth, and life, and so forth. I also believe these words are words of invitation. If you've been invited to abide with Jesus and have come to this relationship, I believe that Jesus' invitation is our calling to invite others to abide. <coughs> All people and I know you know people who need this, who need this holy relationship with Jesus just like you so desperately do. So allow me to close with this. Now most of you here know that I have a Bible study that I have with pastors on Thursdays at Pete's Coffee right over there. It's the Safeway Shopping Center. Five months ago, I was leaving to come back to church, as I always do. When I came out, I noticed a woman who was crying on a, one of the wooden benches that was out front. Several people passed her by as if she wasn't there, and it was clear that she was upset. Tears streamed down her face while her whole body shook. I saw her. Are you okay? Can I give you some help? No, I'm not okay. My life is horrible, and of course I'm cleaning it up. She had several expletives drawn throughout. I'm sorry. Can I get you some tissue at least? Silence. Can I call someone for you to get you some help? Nothing but silence. Can I sit here with you? Silence. Okay. I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you and I'll be on my way. Silence. And so I said a quickie prayer and, and it was, well... I was ready to leave when she blurted out, why did you pray for me? You don't even know who I am. I know, but God does. I'm just making sure that God is taking care of you as we go our separate ways. Why? Nobody has cared for me. Why would God Because God loves you, and God loves me. Silence. And as I stood awkwardly in front of Pete's just for a couple of seconds and started to walk away when she said, 
Don't go. Will you actually do some more prayer with me? So I sat down beside her and we prayed. And the words that I said, again, were nothing special. I asked God to look over her through this troubling time and to love her. And we said, Amen. And she looked up and said, Why are you here listening to me? Well, God wants me to listen to you. And from that moment, she opened up to me about the troubles that she was facing with her mom and the divorce that she was going through with her husband. And as she spoke, she stopped suddenly and said, you are the first person to really listen to me. Again, why? Because God asked me to. And she said, so God is something special to you, someone special to you, right? Yep. Why? Because I'm special to God, just like you. Over the months, I have seen this woman at the same shopping center um, from time and again. We share a smile and a joyful wave. And about a month ago, we bumped into each other again. And I said, hello. And she said, wait, hold on just for a minute. And she reached for her necklace with a cross on it. And she said this, this is because of you. Because you listened to me. Here, this woman was abiding with Christ, right in front of Pete's Coffee, the Safeway Shopping Center. So you are called to abide with Christ Jesus. Come now and abide and be intentional with your abiding. And then invite others to come and abide in that same relationship that you so desperately love. Come and abide. Yeah.